<laughs> yes, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up? What's up? What is up? Back once again, it is the Incredible in the Black podcast. And in case you weren't aware, this is a podcast dedicated to covering the current events and social issues going on in your black world and covering it all from the perspective of three grown ass men who know if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. I am your host, Big O, Mr. In the Black himself. But you know, I can never do this alone. I don't know who we're supposed to be tonight. You know what? We're going to be Onyx. Let me introduce the rest of Onyx oh, tonight. <laughs> Crush. Chris, say what's up. I mean, despite the fro, I got to be sticky, even though we got a ball in there. Nah, nah, oh, never that. You can't do that. <laughs> L. Oh, I'm not going to beat the ass. The boys, the boys. Yo, what's good, family? How y'all doing? No doubt, no doubt. And please make sure you follow us across all social media at In The Black PDCST. That's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you're checking this out, happen to be checking this out on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm go a long way. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button as well. It really goes a long way as well so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Um, today is another opportunity for us to have a black light segment for you guys that don't know the black light is our opportunity to take a deep dive into the people and conversations that deserve the deep dive. But before we do all of that, L, please tell these good folks how they can become part of the family. If they want to become part of the family, man, head on over to the in the black podcast website. And then the left, is it the left or right? One, one of the motherfucking corners. Uh, hit, hit the Become Family tab. Go ahead and scroll down. Oh. And on this particular page, man. <laughs> it's, listen. Damn it, bro. I've been doing this for a while now. I've been doing this for a while now. <laughs> Where my readers at? Uh, no. You can actually, you can buy swag, man. You can buy a t-shirt. You can buy all different types of things to right. support what we're actually trying to build here at In The Black Podcast. But there's two other options. One where you can just donate. You can just send us a cash app at dollar sign in the black PDCST. But a bigger component that we're just really putting a lot more emphasis in, you'll see us talk about a lot more, is our Patreon. Yes, we have stepped our Patreon game up, where you, who are already a consistent member of our family, who have shown us all different types of love throughout all the years that we have been putting in work, you have an opportunity to open up your wallets and give us some money to continue building this wonderful platform you know truthfully that you can't get anything of quality for free so fuck you pay us <laughs> you you are literally the reason why we get all of the hate mail that we get <sighs> so i want to make sure that we're very clear on that um yeah tonight i'm actually i know i say this almost every you single sure night do. I, I say this all the time I and mean, they're probably tired but i yeah, am yeah, yeah, very yeah. excited yeah, yeah. about tonight's come on man can you can you ever behave yourself i'm very I excited was. about tonight's <laughs> guest man um our guest tonight is a former division one athlete he does like many of us in the rat race Rush. found himself excuse me <laughs> saddled with a huge, huge credit card <laughs> and student loan debt when he was leaving oh, college shit. but since then he started grand city sports a nonprofit organization been a two times best-selling author and named one of america's top 40 under 40 business leaders and entrepreneurs and all of that on top of being recognized as one of YouTube's most notable faces when it comes to personal finance. Please help me welcome the incredible Chris saying, Chris, what's going on, man? And I thank you guys for having me, bro. I can't say it. I thank you, bro, for just work with my busy schedule just to make sure we coordinated this. So yeah, man. no doubt. No doubt. I appreciate you it. I appreciate that. it. I see you always hustling, man. I see you pushing out two and sometimes three videos in a day. I know that you got other stuff that you're doing in between then too. So for you to be able to take the time out, I really appreciate it, man. Now, we are familiar with you and I've given the introduction, but I don't think that that does service to who you are. You are, you are a lot of great things. So please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, man. What's up in the black family, man. I'm Chris Sane again, man. I am now a recently retired individual um like they alluded to guys i was a once a former division one athlete i come from a two-parent household but one of my brothers went to prison for 25 years 
and I had a master's degree by the time I was 24. Okay, and so a lot of what I do was so that my brother didn't have to take penitentiary chances. And so it led me down a path of first chasing my dream. We call it hoop dreams, but it was football. Yes, I was nice with the rock, but I was nice with football too. Went to Michigan State, had some hardships. We have a saying in the, at the elite level that a player's best ability is availability. And I couldn't, I couldn't overcome nagging shoulder injuries, man. And so, again, I didn't necessarily have the career I wanted at the collegiate level that would even help me get to the league to acquire the millions that I was trying to possess more so to help my brother when he got out of prison. However, I found something better, something less taxing on the body and I made a killing that way. And so right now, man, I just do my part each and every day show for the people to teach them the game that many don't get taught at home and they definitely don't teach in school. They don't teach us at Harvard and they definitely don't give it to you the way that I give it to you. So that's, in a nutshell, a little bit about me. You guys alluded to the fact that I'm a two-time best-selling author. I don't know if you guys are avid readers, but this book is a best-selling book, and so is this one. And so, again, I'll talk more about these things, but if you want some good reads and some edifying information beyond what you guys might see every day on YouTube, check those reads out just to see the real story behind how I became this young, successful cat. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Now, I've been banging with you. And I, it's, it's funny because we were going to do this broadcast live initially, but I thought that it would be best for us to get a a more a more free conversation. Okay. In the process, one of my homeboys is the one that put me on to you in August of last year, and I've been rocking with you since then. And I've seen, at least from your YouTube presence how you not only have been consistent, but have been so transparent. What got you What got you motivated to doing that? Because uh, in, a little bit of backstory, Chris started in January of 2020, started the zero to 100K challenge and broke 100K way before the end of last year. So what motivated you to even start that? So a couple of things, man. Um, one, just... I really wanted to turn people onto the stock market. I felt for the longest time, our people specifically, we've been playing a wrong game. Okay. And so I was also a believer that if we have somebody that can teach you the game the right way, that like everything else in life, we would dominate. Okay. And so again, CNBC don't talk our language, but I, but I, I know that I do. And so the whole transparency piece was, and you guys can attest to this, man. I see how y'all get down. Like, Black people not going to believe you if you don't show them. So that whole right. piece came from, I need to reel my people in. I know that I'm 100. I know that everything I'm going to share, share with them and show them will be factual. However, they need to see proof. And so I started with $0 because many can relate to having $0. I didn't want to drop $10,000 in. I didn't want to come to the game with $50,000. I wanted to show, like, listen, guys, we can turn $0 and we can make our first $100 in the stock market. We can take $100 and watch that grow to $250. So the small win became something that we all could aspire to. We, we could see that. We all can throw $100 in something to see what it do. But then I would just reel the people in by letting them know, okay, you did that with 100 You turned 100 into two. But imagine if you had to put 500 in, that would now would have been a thousand. And so as we change the mindset and the paradigm of our natural thinking, we got to put down buying J's because we, we, we don't kill that game. We got we all got enough pair of Jordans. We don't need no more. And we all older. So ain't nothing these young cats doing that we ain't already did. So we, don't, we shouldn't be in the Jordan line. We should be owning Nike making and watching our money grow off of them being in the line buying Jordans every time they release old pair of J's we already had 20 years ago. So mm -hmm. about changing the mindset, but doing it in a way that our, our people can first relate to, but I knew it would spread to the masses universally just because that's how I give it every day. No doubt, no doubt. So what do you think is one of the, the big reasons why we as a people have not engaged in stocks, in the I stock think, market? What is the reasons you think? Big L, great question, bro. That whole Ponzi scheme turns us off. 
like I got this series called Shoebox and Duffel Bags, and mm-hmm. we would rather put our money in a shoebox or a duffel bag or under the mattress before we let somebody swindle us out of some money. So that was right. the most. Mm-hmm. Second, we always thought that the stock market was for the 1% or for people that wasn't like us. They wasn't swagged up like you, Big L. They didn't have a, they wasn't looking like you guys. And so we didn't think that it was for us. It was just, mm-hmm. for us. and so when you bring a young knowledgeable, articulate guy to the table. Now I'm changing the whole face of investing. I'm changing the mm-hmm. whole face to the stock market. And unlike anybody else, I can get you real results by just watching a YouTube video. I don't even have to be a real financial advisor. I can just give you the game every day and you will see your money triple, double, and quadruple that we teach and preach every single day. So that part was kind of slow to the game because of how they presented it and exposure is the biggest thing bro like no not to warren buffett but he wouldn't be the only cat in that space had we had exposure to it we dominate everything tiger wood best thing off michael jordan the best on with the on the hoop court it don't matter what what we do from music to sports to entertainment to education we are the best however when you are lacking exposure and access Again, other people get to carry the mantle to look like they're mm. we do, but that's not the case. And that's mm. why we just between us and not the hope I'm not sharing too much. This is why I'm one of the highest paid YouTubers. This is why I have lapsed everybody on YouTube who was bigger than me. I used to be sitting back like this. Why the YouTubers lying, not not being transparent. Now when when real shows up, the one thing I love about YouTube, that algorithm, that algorithm don't lie. It catapulted a bunch of YouTubers, and I'm in route to catch more. And by the end of the year, I should have passed damn near everybody on YouTube in this financial space. I'm talking about. Gotcha. That. I can do right. it. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I have to wonder, like, uh, in reference to what you said in terms of exposure and access, um, like, what do you think of the uh, the proliferation of all these apps and different softwares available, like from Forex to to uh, the the, the Robinhood, M1 Robin Robinhood, yeah, yeah and, and 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 yeah, I mean, is is the access really there for us now? And and what does that mean, you know, for you know, for us right now? To be honest, what, what do you what, what do you think of all of them? Because it's it's, it's it's like two dozen of them now. I'll be honest with you, I love it. I love every last one of them. They even the plan. See, check this out. Before Robinhood, Robinhood is the first mover. I know they get a lot of hate, but they were the first to start this whole wave of what's going on now. Okay, so. They level the playing field. We now got access. We don't get. We don't have to get charged this outrageous fee for making one trade. That can deter you if you're getting charged seven dollars every time you make a trade. You Fuck that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So now, when they made it free, they made it platform so user friendly. It became something that we all can engage with. Then you got somebody on the back end like myself that's showing you step by step what to do. Now you got somebody walking alongside you and all of those broke down the barrier to make it something we all can be inclusive with. And now people can start getting their money on saving and, and building their wealth through the stock market. Okay. What do you think one of the biggest challenges is when it comes to teaching people how to utilize the stock market? I can only speak for myself as I've been engaging and then I'm, I'm not going to lie since following you doing my own due diligence, being consistent, since I started investing, I've been able to five and six and actually seven X my money, even prior to this correction that came down the line. Right. What do you think the biggest issue is with trying to teach people how to work the stock market? One of the biggest issues I see, and I'm just being, I'm just talking to my family right now. Y'all people think it's get rich. Mm. So they come in, you know, we shoot dice in the hood. We shoot dice. Right. Uh, we get to the bag in different ways. So they'll bring that mentality to the stock market and mm. any stock over something like if we all invested in the black podcast. And so we should, we should be investing in a quality company like y'all versus a penny stock. So, but the penny stock give you that quick rush. It give you the feeling like you at the slot machine or like you playing craps or blackjack. And so, but that's a recipe for a disaster because you might win one time, but you're going to lose five. And then you're going to not even come back to the market because you're going to be like, man, all I do is lose money. But if you do the game or have somebody showing you, okay, 
you might not have to buy Apple at $100, but you can buy something like Plug Power that's up and coming that y'all don't even know about. That's a great company. In five years from now, they will be a household name, but you won't have the volatility of a penny stock. You know what I'm saying? A stock dollars equates to a penny stock. I dig that's it. That's where dig the game it. get messed up at. I dig it. I think, Chris, I'm going to give you some pushback, man. Don't do not do it because I know that my portfolio, shut the hell up. My portfolio <laughs> is very mixed up with pennies and traditionals right now. Because let's even speak, technically speaking, one of, one of my babies right now is IDEX. Yeah. So you're going to tell me I need to get rid of IDEX? Oh, that's one of my babies too. See, okay. Okay. Certain penny stocks <laughs> has the ability to grow into quality companies. NEO used to be a penny stock. NEO, I first had at $2. I saw it go to seven and I seen it go all the way up to 65. That's how we retire early. I bought Tesla at $80. This back 10 years ago when nobody didn't know about Tesla. $80 put $10 in it and it ran to $2,700. Okay, that's how you have create all this wealth that I'm trying to teach you guys about, not you, but like the YouTube world. Mm -hmm. But point being though is it's okay if you have done your due diligence on a penny stock and they have a real quality business model. A good leadership, a nice balance sheet. Okay, because they got to get their feet up. AMD, AMD used to be 88 cents. Okay, AMD is now above $70. Okay, oh, that yeah. was, that been a great company back when they were a penny stock. However, you have to know how to pick them so to be invested in them on the front end. But just randomly just picking stock because they under $5, that's the, that's the pitfall some of us fall into. And then when we get burned, when I lost all my money, when yeah. I was a thousand, then I lost the whole thousand. You know what I'm yeah, saying? We, yeah. we end up saying stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the things is I've been trying to put people on to you and just even put people on to the stock market in general is that a lot of people come into investment thinking that it's a one time pump. So you say, okay, I got $500. I'm just going to drop $500 yep. in it and yeah. I'm going to be good and I'm going to watch this thing ride up to $20,000. When in fact, mm -hmm. I will give you credit, man. You've really, you really do do a very good job of giving people a new perspective on the stock market. Because I never, even though I knew that internally, I never was able to verbalize it. And when I saw it, I was like, you're supposed to be able to continually invest. It's not just like, okay, I'm just going to stash yeah. a couple of dollars here and then let's call it a day. Absolutely. Do you see that as another big hurdle for yourself? Because I mean, you've been doing it for a minute now. So it is. Let me, let me speak to that. It, you're hundred percent correct first and foremost but the thing is we all should treat the stock market like our savings account i try to bring a different swag to investing just to make it healing because it's really a boring sector to be honest with you facts okay? <laughs> however, however if we understand when you put money in the stock market you're paying yourself first and every time you get some money you pay yourself first it's about changing the mindset it's about that new perspective that we talk about so when you get in the habit of putting money in a stock market, like you said, on a consistent basis versus one lump sum of 500 one time, then you start seeing, oh, my money, my own contribution is growing in addition and in conjunction with what the market is hoping to do. Now you got two track, you got two racers on the track taking yeah. you, now your army yeah. Yeah. for you. And this is how you get to financial independence a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing is, Chris, that I hear people say all the time is with with the medium wealth in black households being thirty six hundred dollars, folks are always saying that I can't afford to do stocks. I can't afford to do that. And basically what they're saying is I can't afford to lose money. How do you combat that, bro? How, how do you? I know you talk about the mentality, but what are some tangible ways that we can help our people with that thought process? Absolutely, great question, Big L. One way we have to go about that, man, is is understanding we can't afford not to invest. First mm -hmm. and foremost, we might have to reduce our spending. We might have to live within our means. We might have to cut out cable and just watch YouTube videos. Just have Wi-Fi and watch watch In The Black podcast. Don't try to watch and have all the subscriptions. And so now that money you was paying AT&T or mm -hmm. yeah. whatever, that could be the money that you are safely and securely putting in the stock market. Whether it go up or down, it's not bothering you 
because you cut out an expense to accommodate for that asset that you're now investing in. We got to be more strategic with our thinking because we can't afford not to be in the stock market versus feeling like we can't afford to lose money. So that's a phenomenal question, bro. It's about the mindset shift. I had to first, like, like, like you guys said, when you did my introduction, I had to pay off my debt first so I can have more money to invest. I was a dude that was paying off debt, but investing whatever I had left. So my, I always was investing. It just wasn't that much money because I was getting the debt paid down. But then I never stopped paying the payment. Let me just tell you a quick story. And that's only two seconds. Took your time, bro. Our note payment used to be $449. I was trying to build my credit. So I leased a little Lincoln Zephyr. I was going to say, you was driving some the shit. Okay. Through the streets. <laughs> and my, my payment was $449. When that was paid off, I never stopped paying $449. I just kept, I was already accustomed to paying it anyway. I just continued to pay it, even though it was paid off. But I was give it to the stock market. That's where that whole five hundred dollars every two weeks come from. I would just give four forty nine. I just added fifty extra extra dollars once I paid other stuff off. I freed up some more cash, and I just give five hundred dollars to the stock market. Now I'm building my own savings account, if you will, investment account, retirement. All the same thing. We just got to put our own spin on it to get us locked in. And so before I knew it. Three to five years of doing that, them little five hundred dollars turn into some money on top of how the stock market helped it boost it up a little bit. So, Big L, that's that's how we combat that that's thought. Good game, of right that's good game. That's good game. One of the things that you said in one of your episodes, I think you, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say it as though I'm not going to say it as though you don't say it often. Okay, one of the things that you have said in your episodes is that. You don't put money in the bank. You put it in the stock market. So instead of putting money in Bank of America, or whatever the case is, you just dump it in Nike. You dump it in yeah. Apple. You dump it in whatever. Do you think that that's also a viable strategy for people that find it hard to invest or may not have as much money to invest? Is that a proper strategy? Or you think that that's just something that's built for you or work for you? It, it will work for everybody. However, we have to be mindful that you still need a bank account to pay DTE. So the bills that I do have, that free right now, y'all, and then I'm retired. But the bills that I do have is DTE and consumers. Okay, them the two bills and Verizon. That's a, them are my three bills only. Okay, imagine that. Hmm. I got to talk to y'all about that too. Being oh, please. You know, bills to pay. <laughs> mm. But anyway, um, so I keep a bank account because that's on auto pay to pay that. But all other money go into Nike. OK, or Apple, either or. OK, or at and I got three that I do that with. I'll just load all of those up until I'm ready to pull some money out for an investment, not to pay a bill per se. So I want to be I want to be clear that don't use money you need to pay a bill with and have it sitting in there. Let it be some money you might have been saving for your emergency fund. Put that mm -hmm. in Nike. Let Nike be your emergency fund. How about that? And Apple be your emergency fund. And every time you get money. Those are those stocks always go up. OK, Nike, Apple will end the year close to two hundred dollars. So if you bought it, put your money in it now at one twenty, you're going to have a great return on your investment in rocks with two hundred dollars yeah, versus sitting in the bank earning point zero zero one percent on your money. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. I'm not going to lie. I've, I, that's one of the things that I've changed my perspective on and started doing was actually taking my monies that I would typically just put inside Bank of America and throwing it into Apple so that I can get those additional returns. Um, I'm so glad you're here, Chris, man. I'm going to tell you a little story real quick. Me and O have been friends for a little while, bro. I mean, we we cool. We talk about personal shit, you know, real friend type shit. Yeah. This is the first time he's ever talked to me and Crush about stocks, bro, about how to invest our money. Wow. Like this motherfucker has never. <laughs> I mean, never. <laughs> like, never mentioned you. Ain't never, until a couple weeks ago. Hey, Chris, man, don't listen to that bullshit, man. And don't I'm like, who the fuck is Chris saying? And don't he says, oh, he says you on YouTube. Man, he ain't never introduced us. That's bullshit. <laughs> you, you I hope you got better friends than he did. <laughs> you got that. 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 Okay. Now, one of the pitfalls or the struggles that you faced when you started investing, because I mean, we've seen you. One of the things that you always say is that you always see 
you see the end result, but nobody sees the journey. So right. what was yeah. your journey as yeah. you were going through that to get to where you are now? Absolutely. So starting off kind of like I just touched on with the whole, I had to first get out of debt in order to have money to invest. So I would tell people, pay down any credit card debt, car loans, car notes, mortgages, get that stuff either down or paid off so that you can free up enough money to put in the stock market. Okay. So that's the journey that people don't see. They may just see you adding $500 every two weeks, or they may see you adding double up and hitting the home runs, but they're not seeing the provisions you made to be able to do that. Facts. Get 5,000 or $10,000 into a play. And then we watch double up within the 30 days, 90 days type of deal. And I'm saying it. So that's the, most people think the end result, very few consider the journey thing we talk about. You're not seeing the sacrifices behind. They don't see the entrepreneurial stuff. I feel like facts. I, I'm definitely yeah. one of the top entrepreneurs out here, and but they don't even see, they don't even probably know I got 19 streams of income to even have all this wealth that I brought to the stock market. Robinhood is probably my smallest of all of them. Leo. I can I can dig it. You know I what I'm saying? It. So but so they don't see all of that. So sometimes they don't have a full picture of of, of what all goes into being a successful entrepreneur, running a business, being a good husband, still taking, I hold it down in my community heavy. I visit all the prison. I go on prison tours just to make sure cats ain't be, forgot about. Like I, I do all of that. And I still run back to my YouTube studio and try to push out one or two, two videos a day. Like those are the things that don't get seen. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's, that's what it would be found. Talk a little bit about that entrepreneur, uh, the entrepreneurial piece to it. Um, what has been the hiccups, the trials that you faced trying to be your own, your own man? Because it's not easy it's not to easy. step away from the corporate plantation when you're being consistently fed a paycheck every two weeks or whatever you're getting paid to say not only that you're going to step out on your own. But to step out on your own and then make it successful, that's that's some heavy shit. So yeah. please talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, man. I'll start with the entrepreneur journey first. So you guys know this, man. I told you, oh, I was a I was a guy that was dedicated to sports. So the downside of when you laser focus on making it to the league is you don't develop your social skills, you don't develop outside relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys, mm -hmm. y'all, y'all my big bros, y'all know. The whole world is revolved around relationships. It ain't what you know. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. But as an athlete, when you don't get into the NFL, that's our brotherhood. So when you when you're a regular civilian, I didn't have no summer job. I don't know nobody that could look out and give me a job or help me get into this place. I don't have those. My networks were in sports. So you don't have nobody to help you get a job. So the whole entrepreneurial part came because looking like, man, I'm going to have to get it out the mud for myself because I don't have people that can provide openings for, you know, we are from the streets, man. You don't have, you just don't have access. Let's just put it like that. Okay. Right, so that's, that's what made me yeah. an entrepreneur. So I was an entrepreneur before I ever had a job between us though. I had a master's degree. So I said, man, I want to at least see what this thing can get me. You know what I'm saying? So I end up, between us, I worked at Notre Dame with high profile student athletes. So let me tell you this. I was being groomed to be the director of player development for the Detroit Lions. I didn't make it to the league. So on the path to become the director of player development for Detroit Lions, I had to go work with high profile student athletes. So some of my students were Manti Teo, mm. Tate, Skylar Diggins, all those high profile to, 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 to be on my caseload. <laughs> So because you had to be prepared to talk to young millionaire athletes, they might be cocky, they might be arrogant, things like that. But you had to kind of just be able to navigate that. So that was the between us. That's how you get that kind of job. However, working with them uppity kids, I'm looking, I come from the mud, man. Like y'all, y'all don't even know the struggle. Y'all don't know about having lights cut off. Y'all don't know about a lot of yeah, stuff yeah. with kids that had the spoon in your mouth. So. I ended up leaving Notre Dame to go to a community college because those type of students was understand. Yeah. Like and so I can mm. relate to that. Yeah. So again, I just retired from there. I was there for 10 years. But my point being, like 
that's how I chose to use my degree. I had this mass. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist, you guys. So just know I could be going way deeper on. Yeah, you could go ahead. If I to. <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. saying. So um, I used my degree in education, and I was making. I brought home a good salary, a decent salary from working in institutions of higher learning while always being an entrepreneur. Like I told you, I was an entrepreneur first. I just said, let me use my degree since I have a degree. Yeah, yeah. Again, my my side hustle or entrepreneurial pursuits far outweigh and make more money than my day job, my nine and five. So it was getting in the way and costing me money to be there, which I did early retirement. I understand. I can understand. That. Let's talk about the giving back, though, bro, because I think that's a an aspect that I know when you are black and you experience some sense of success, there's a black tax. And yeah that black tech tends to be your expectations of giving back to your homies, your hood, your family. How have you balanced that, man? Because that shit is rough, bro. It is. It's very rough. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed big bro for already being in a position of giving back. Granted, this is my nonprofit right here. It's, it's an organization built on giving back naturally. So, in Michigan, I'm a household name in the city of Grand Rapids for giving back. So that's a staple of, of and a fabric of who I'm naturally are. So now that I had this success, the whole giving back piece, I, I send kids to college every year on a scholarship. I we we was a people that's giving turkeys away every Thanksgiving. We are the people that's giving backpacks. We we bought the whole city laptops, iPads to to decrease the digital divide from that whole work from home yeah COVID. Yeah. like that's just what naturally what i do anyway so i'm not the guy that's successful and have fell victim to the black team. before i was successful i was already giving back if that makes sense it does mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you do you feel some sort of um i guess you've already answered it but i mean even though that's naturally who you are you don't feel the weight of that responsibility at all because sometimes when it's it's different when you you give naturally of your own volitions, right? But at the same time, when you have people that, for lack of a better description, have their hand out, and I don't say that pejoratively or negatively, but that when people are actually expecting you to help carry them into something, the weight of that responsibility doesn't weigh on you at all. Let me tell you, that's a great question. Let me give you what do weigh on me. Yeah into your point what well, way on me is like y'all my new big bros so i feel like you guys should at least be having what i have so mm. on me is tupac said it ain't no fun if the homies can't, can't have, have no you know i'm saying but look at that from a business a, a wealth perspective so my thing would be i don't want you envying me or being jealous of me so I find a way to invest in what you're doing. I find a way to support what you're doing so that my success can at least lessen your envy and jealousy. Mm. So that's that's my struggle. It's like, man, you know what, man, I, I can't bring everybody along. Everybody might even watch my stock videos. The game is if you watch one video, you can make it from five thousand dollars to ten thousand. That's just how I put it down. However, people might not grab a hold of it to take part in it. And so my thing is, okay, even though I'm providing you that, let me still find a way to sow into you some kind of way. Yeah. You have to grow envious of me because I know where the Lord is taking me on my journey. And I don't want you to be trying to pull me back for no reason. Um, and, so, and so that's how my stress is. I hope that answers your question, Big O. No, no, you, that's, you got that's more what it is for me. No, you got it, you got it, you got it. You know, you know, I have to wonder, um, you know, how have you managed to inst- really instill a long term mentality in the people that you're working with, you know, in terms of investing? Because, I mean, like, like you said, the, 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 the immediate you know, gratification from penny stocks is, uh, is, is right there. So, I mean, how do you co- I mean, how do you combat an almost ingrained cultural attitude we're having towards money that, you know, that, and, and, and changing that to a, a long term, five, 10, 15 year vision? Yeah, great question, family. Me, it was about understanding that it's a marathon. 
Nipsey Hussle couldn't have been better for the culture just in terms of what he was trying to promote. Mm-hmm. The stock market is the same way. So I'm naturally, I'm naturally a, just a smooth, calm dude, meaning I'm in a rush. I don't walk nowhere. I ain't mm-hmm. never talking fast. Like, so when I got in the stock market, those same characteristics and attributes was kind of how my investment style was. Like, I just want to make money over time. I wasn't caring about to make a, a dollar tomorrow long as I made a dollar mm. in three months. Mm. I was with sure. that. So I end up be embracing the long-term investing strategy versus get rich quick or quick money because I was able to learn the ebbs and flows of the stock market. I was able to, I'm able to teach it so well because I studied it for 12 years and start in understanding, oh, the stock go up, then the stock cool off and then it come right back down to the same price again. I ain't even got to chase the stock. If I want Apple at 120, I can just wait to Apple right now where it's at today, 123. I can come back. It's going to shoot to 185. Then it's going to come right back down to 120. And once I learned the fluctuation of how stock prices move, I said it makes sense for me to be a long-term investor because it allows mm-hmm. these assets at the prices that I like them at. And you know in the streets, if you're in the dope game, it was always about buying low. You, you didn't want to break – you want to be paying top dollar for for the for the dope. You you wanted to buy low in the stocks. The same way it killed me how corporate America take our culture. Stock <laughs> lingo, exact same game. Every everything mm-hmm. is identical, and so that's why yeah. we you guys because it should be transferable to them. They know about busting a breakdown. They know about yep. selling high. That's all the stock market is. But you're doing it with companies. And that they can double and triple and quadruple within a year if you get the right ones. Mm, 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 mm. All right, we're going to try and wrap it up. I know you got a lot of things that you need to do, but I want to try and get you squared away. If you had to give, if you were going to give a beginner investment starter pack of three or four pieces of advice for someone who's just getting into the game, what would those three or four pieces of advice be? The thing I would say, number one, would be invest in things that you know, like, and love. That is the best place to start. Okay. So for those that's unfamiliar with my story, when I first started investing, my first stock was Nike because I'm an athlete and that's what I wore to the gym every day. So I was familiar with the gloves, the shorts, the shoes, the cleats. So when I became an investor, when I got out of the consumer mind state, investor had on that was a company that i knew very well and i saw how they was con- they got lebron then they they would go out and get jordan they would have kd they would have Kyrie. i saw how they was moving and i liked that as an investor in the company they were doing good by the dollars that i was in that company so invest in things you know like and love understand that it's not a get rich quick scheme however it can make you wealthy if you're in it for the right reasons, meaning investing in quality, trying to lead a corporate plantation, you supplement your life and be able to live well in retirement. Okay. And so it's lessons like that. I feel if you, if you make them a pillar of what your investing journey is off the gate, it will keep you and deter you from getting off into penny stocks because you will see quickly how that leads to doom and gloom. But investing in quality, slow and steady, and sometimes you get a spike and it might shoot up faster than you think. Mm, 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 mm. Chris Same, man, thank you so much for taking the time out mm. to be on the show, man. We really appreciate yes. it. Before My we man. head out of here, man, yeah. please tell our folks, our listeners, our audience where they can find you if they like to find you, YouTube, your social medias, all of that. I have a saying, real name, no gimmicks. My name is Chris Sane. That's my handle on everything, on IG, on Twitter, on YouTube. Just Chris Sane or Chris Sane Jr. That should pop up. Website is www.chrissane.com. That's where you can get all my books. You can get all the merch. You can can get stock market advice, one-on-one coaching. Anything you guys need is... The hub of my website will have all that information. So just tap in any one of those platforms, and I love to connect. No doubt, no That's doubt. Elf, where can people find you? If they like to find you, man. 
Uh, Twitter these days, man. At Elgin Bailey. No doubt, no doubt. Crush, how can these folks find you if they want to find you? On Instagram at uh, SP Methods, aka Bridge, or the Orange Crush with a K. No doubt. And I'm Big O, Mr. In the Black himself. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at MR underscore Not in the Facebook. black. And <laughs> MR <laughs> underscore in the black. And I want to thank you guys once again for joining us for another incredible episode of the In the Black podcast. Remember, you could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to kick with us, and we appreciate it. Follow us across social media at In the Black PDCST on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And as always, informed, intelligent, in the black. In the black. Peace. Peace.